All right, well, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're, we're back with more space stuff with JP. What you got for us this week? Yeah, so I figured this time I'd talk about the Messenger probe. It was uh, the first orbiter sent to Mercury. Mm -hmm. uh, Messenger is one of these totally tortured acronyms that NASA is so fond of. It stands mm -hmm. for Mercury Surface Space Environment Geochemistry and Ranging, with various letters in there being capitalized or not capitalized. <laughs> uh, it's always kind of held a special place in my heart just because the first time I visited the Kennedy Space Center was shortly before this probe actually launched. I think about mm. two, I missed it by about two weeks. So it was always kind of like something I kept an eye on. So it's like, all right, you know, I was, you know, I was in a couple miles of this vehicle and now it's mm -hmm. on its way to Mercury. Um, and so just something, something I kind of tracked it all throughout its entire mission. Um, nice. It launched on August 3rd, 2004. And it was kind of an interesting mission because uh, getting to Mercury is actually a lot harder than you might think it would be. Hmm. Like, it seems like, you know, you're going closer to the sun, you, you know, you just kind of slow down. And it's like, mm. yeah, well, when you're in space, is slowing down is easier said than done. Because mm. So you basically, you know, like, I've tried to think of a bunch of different analogies for this, but the best mm. I can think of is kind of like, you know, imagine you are on a, the, a highway and you're going 60 miles an hour and you have to try to jump onto a car that's going 20 miles an hour. That's not going to work super great oh, unless no. you uh, take some maneuvers there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it always been kind of viewed as like you know there have been uh, a flyby before in the 70s, but the idea of slowing down enough to enter orbit seemed you know too tricky to take too much mm -hmm. fuel, be too expensive. Uh, but some people figured out this crazy orbital trajectory that would take years and years. And I love listing. So it would do flybys of it would launch from Earth, mm -hmm. and then a year later do a flyby of Earth, a flyby of Venus, a flyby of Venus, a flyby of Mercury, flyby of Mercury. Flyby of Mercury, and then finally we captured around Mercury. Wow! So so decelerating with each of those orbits, basically. Yeah, exactly. So gotcha. by approaching it from kind of the opposite direction as the orbit was going, it would essentially, like at a microscopic amount, speed mm. up that planet because it would be pulling the planet towards it, mm. and it could be doing. You know, usually, th so this is called a gravity assist, and usually mm -hmm. you see them in the other direction where you kind of approach along the same direction as the orbit, and you kind of get yanked along and get a big speed boost out of that. This mm. was uh going the opposite direction to kind of bleed off more speed and bleed off more speed until eventually they arrived at Mercury slow enough that they could just use their boosters to enter into a nice orbit. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so this thing's about the size of a car or so. It was launched on a Delta II rocket. So, you know, for a long time, those are kind of the workhorse of, you know, getting, mm. you know, medium class stuff up there, especially a lot of probes. Um, it was kind of interesting because it was so close to the sun that they had to put this big solar shield on there. So you see these... Mm. Uh, stubby little solar panels since they didn't quite need as big solar panels as usual mm. and this big white uh ceramic fabric shield that they would always mm. keep oriented towards the sun so they wouldn't just bake the spacecraft <laughs> so you being know, that close it must get really hot I think. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's, for, uh, it's so they you know because you don't want to have to have you know in space you gotta the only thing you've got available to you is radiative cooling and so they mm. didn't want to have to have like a bunch of giant radiators so like oh well well let's just prevent it from getting on here in the first place and it worked out well and you mm. know of course, they had to make sure they always kept it pointed towards the sun uh, to pull that off. But, you know, it seems like they pulled that off. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. What was the purpose of the mission specifically? Yeah, so one of the big things was, uh, so the first time it had been visited, uh, Mercury had been visited was by Mariner 10 in 1975. Mm. Uh, and it had only seen about like something like 40% of the surface. So um. one of the big objectives was to scan the entire surface, get a full map of Mercury, uh, which they completed uh, after do like after I think the first ex extended uh, mission mm -hmm. extension, mm -hmm. uh, they were also looking for stuff like they wanted to study the exosphere, the uh, magnetics, uh, a magnetic field of the uh, planet, uh, and they're also looking to see if there was ice uh, around the poles, uh. which kind of seems crazy at first. It's Mercury; it's very very hot. You can melt lead mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but the poles are you know further up and they have this permanently shallow angle with the sun so there are craters mm. that are permanently in shadow yeah. so it's very very cold and there had using radar from earth they'd been studying mercury and it seemed like something really reflective is up there those poles could it be water could it be ice that mm. you know that'd be really interesting and sure enough it was so wow. you know whoa not, yeah so i mean it's not like big ice cubes laying around the surface <laughs> or anything but there's water on Mercury, and so it's like, mm. wow, that's pretty awesome news. Like, you know, mm. it's, it's, it's like if there's water on Mercury, you know, it seems like you pretty much find it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember the, the sort of the science beforehand was how much water is, you know, anywhere other than Earth. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure that kind of stuff is like, oh, okay, it's more common than we thought. 
Yeah, yeah. So oh, I should point it out that it finally, so after launching 2004, mm. it finally arrived in March 2011. So that, yeah, that's how long it took them to get there. Because, oh. you know, it's kind of like, you know, you can get, they can get there cheap, but they can't get there fast. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, so then they got there and they, they stuck around for a while. Like I think mm. the original science mission was only supposed to be about a year and a half. They got a couple of extensions so they could mm. uh, map out the full complete surface to take more measurements and uh, get all sorts of good stuff. They, you know, completely wild success. They got everything they're hoping to get out of it, including some interesting color images, which is kind of like, it's mostly gray, but if you look at it, it's like, oh, wow. Like, mm. hey, look, there's some like subtle, you know, tinting there of other colors. It's cool. How cool is that? That is amazing. Hot, hot. Well, yes, how hot is that? Exactly. <laughs> one of my favorite things about Messenger, though, is it's one of the these uh, bizarre NASA first-person Twitter feeds. So oh, yeah. they had Messenger tweeting, you know, or, like, people tweeting as Messenger. Mm. Uh, and say, so this is all pretty interesting, but then the deorbit procedure came up. Mm -hmm. uh, and you started seeing these really depressing tweets like, well, I've got three hours and 26 minutes left, <laughs> frowny face. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the last one was, well, I guess it is time to say goodbye to all my friends, family, support team. I'll be making my final impact very soon. Oh, I was like, what? oh my God, these people running this Twitter account are monsters. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in fact, this is actually fairly recently. Once the mm. mission was done, they run out of maneuvering uh, mm. fuel and everything. They decided, all right, well, let's not leave this thing lying around. So they mm. uh, deorbited it, or litho braking, or whatever mm. euphemism you want to use, and yeah. it impacted the surface on April 30th this year, mm. 2015. Yeah, is that a standard thing now, where instead of keeping the, the vehicle just sort of sitting there, they will sort of aggressively make sure it's not there anymore? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. I mean, you don't want to have, um, you know, something just floating around out there that you could forget about or that you, know, you have to deal with as another, you know, just more uh -huh. debris. Uh, and they've been doing this for a while. Like, for instance, Galileo, they uh, deorbited that into Jupiter, actually. And I mm. believe, uh, I could be wrong with this, it, if, if not the fastest, it's one of the fastest human-made objects ever in the moments before it hit the Jupiter atmosphere because it wow. was just hauling ass to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there was even, there was some pretty funny uh, people who, um, not not people who knew anything about the spacecraft people worried about uh the intense pressures compressing the plutonium battery pack in uh. galileo uh sparking a nuclear explosion and turning jupiter into a star it's like, well, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. great so, sci-fi yeah. yeah so yeah so they've been uh, deorbiting stuff for a while now so it just mm -hmm. kind of was a natural thing to do uh but yeah. it did lead to some pretty entertaining Twitter <laughs> there. yeah if you're worrying about that i i think we, we would have probably you know made Earth into a star by this point, if that kind of stuff was possible. Well, to be fair, there was some concern that the first atomic blast would set the oh, atmosphere on fire. That's true. Fire. They went yeah. for it anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, this may be it, everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold your breath. Hold yeah. out of your butts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, that is that is amazing, though. You wow. got it, something that uh, uh, the, the end was there for that long. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, orbiting Mercury for about four years. So, you know, for a mm. while there... Uh, we had orbiters going around, I think it was Mercury, I think Venus had something with Europe, I mean, obviously Earth is covered, mm. uh, Mars has got several orbiters, uh, Jupiter wasn't covered, but we did have Cassini going around Saturn, mm. uh, so you know, we had a good number of the planets covered at that moment, uh, so we're down one, we got to get another one up there. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they find magnetic poles? Uh, so I don't recall the um, findings mm. for the magnetosphere experiment off the top of my head, but I know mm. that... Uh, they did have instruments for detecting how it interact, how the magnetosphere of Mercury, if it was like, does it exist? How does it interact with the intense, mm. you know, solar wind and everything? Uh, so I guess I'd refer people to the Wikipedia article. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was just curious because um, somewhere I'd heard a theory that uh, the reason Mars has practically no atmosphere was because of the lack of uh, magnetosphere. Uh, yes, yeah, so that it, that's that's definitely true for Mars. So yeah, mm. I, I guess I would I would be a little surprised if. So, again, this is just me talking off the top of my mm. head. I would be a little surprised if Mercury had a magnetosphere uh, just because it seems like it's relatively small. It would cool off faster. And, I'd, uh, and that would also explain why there's basically no atmosphere. You know, there's mm. a little very tenuous thing there, uh, which I believe is mostly a product of, like, solar wind interacting with the surface. But really, not, nothing, <laughs> maybe, nothing maybe, left there. Maybe over by the ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a very small amount of water vapor just chilling out in a little puddle. <laughs> Very cool. That that's that is amazing, though. Yeah, cool stuff. I love like, like there's so many like different probes out there that you know are lesser known. It's just cool mm -hmm. finding out like, all right, what are you doing up to? Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's very cool. All right. Well, um, anything else you want to talk about in terms of Messenger? 
Um, that's pretty much it for Messenger. Check out their website. I should have looked it up ahead of time. If you just Google mm. Messenger probe, you'll find all sorts of great photos and stuff about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a rather beautiful probe, actually. Yeah. You know, when you look at it. Yeah. It's got a cool. styli- right. stylish sun shield. Yes, there we are. <laughs> a little parasol. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.